Good morning, Sosa Good morning, Everybody, nice to see you keep again. Going, keep going, give me one second. Uh, no, hey, 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 give me one second. Help, help, help. How you doing, everybody? I'm Rob. Darko just got up and walked out. <laughs> he was totally unprepared. And here he is now. Hey, Darko, everybody's been waiting for you. Oh, what's going on? Ah, not much, not much. What's going That's on with right. you? You look like you're having some problems. Yeah, just, just, you know, that time of month. Oh. Yeah, it's just normal, nothing too unusual. Oh, you got yeah, that. A little bit of. You got that not, that not so. Thing. That not so fresh feeling? Yeah, that bleeding thing, you know, between <laughs> the legs and shit. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to our first break, though, already, because I just farted and I think I need to wipe my ass. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I, I, uh, Roland tells me that he's uh, looking to get his, uh, his little uh, segment sponsorships now. Um, because he, he thinks he's got, oh, yeah, yeah he, th he says that he thinks there's probably enough popularity there, uh, to start, you know, bringing in he's some gonna money. He's going to sponsor him, Can Tuna. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. He's yeah, so he sent letters out to several companies, including Tampax. They're the company that makes the, the tampons for the ladies. Uh, and he feels like that they're going to want to sponsor his segment. But that would mean he'd have to hold up a box of Tampax. Uh, while he was doing, you know, at some point and talk about them. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope they do decide yeah. to send him some cheddar. But, <laughs> knowing him, he's going to hold up some used tampons to prove they work uh, on camera. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, there goes his sponsorship money. So uh, I, I hope he manages to behave himself for one moment out of his life. Uh, people, you may notice something different tonight. Uh, I have glasses on. Uh, my wife uh, said that in addition to helping me to see, which is really, you know, I I'm amazed now. This is what all you people see. Uh, but she said that it also makes me look more like a cryptocurrency host and, and a friendly person. So what do you think? Do I look do I look more professional and friendly with the glasses on? You look like an XRP investor now. Uh, an XRP, that's exactly what I was going for. Yeah, so I, I look like mm. you, basically, is what you're saying. You being mm, an XRP yeah. investor, <laughs> and me, of course, never oh, having, yeah. me never having bought any, you having bought some. It's only a temporary thing. Yeah, but, but the, and it, it paid off. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you that your endeavor into becoming an XRP investor <laughs> was profitable for you. That's great. I, I wouldn't know what that's like because I've never bought any. But you clearly are an expert. I only held for two days when I was trying to pump it with that pump group that went all over the news. I took advantage of the situation. I capitalized on it. I held it for two days <coughs> before the time of the target time of that projected pump. So I told everybody on this day, at this time, everybody buy XRP and pump it to a dollar. Mm. So me being smart, I bought two days before that that date came, hmm. and I sold about four or six hours before the time that everyone was supposed to pump it. Uh huh. Made five grand. Wow. And the, when the time came for everyone to buy, the price just went. Yeah. Shut itself completely. Everybody flash, flash sold. And and, and in, those, in those two days in between those two events that you just described for us the purchase and the sale for those two days you were an xrp investor and that just sticks it's like one of those it's like uh you i know, do feel uh, like a like a laptop it has a security sticker on it to keep you from opening it and once you open it they know that you've opened it it's kind of like that for you you, you the, the seal is broken like a girl like a girl when she has sex for the first time and, and then afterwards you know I was going to say more like, you know, when you get a package delivered and there's a, a label on the package saying damaged goods, mm. I kind of feel like damaged goods now. Well, like, yeah, you kind of, of you kind of are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, yeah. for our audience, that's not actually true in the case of every woman. And you cannot simply inspect a woman for her, for her hymen. 
uh, to determine whether or not she's ever had sex. Uh, women are human beings and they masturbate just like other human beings. Um, so uh, that may or may not be present. Uh, it, it's just something people say. Uh, really not that accurate. I'm sure Roland could disagree. Oh. Yeah, fine. <laughs> All right. uh, and we're not going to lie to you. There is not much happening, as you may already know, if you try to follow cryptocurrency news uh, like we do all week uh, and watch it and uh, say to yourself, gee, does this sound interesting? And maybe you don't do all that, but maybe you keep track. Uh, been a, a weird, a weird middling week in crypto. Not a lot of announcements uh, and not a lot of action. Uh, we slight recovery from the bloodbath last week, but now it's just sort of middling in the recovery zone. Uh, I think we may have found a floor of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and, and, uh, I'm just just throwing. That was an excellent uh, contribution, but, Darko. Thank you. Yeah, I know. No, no, I'll just just throw. But uh, on an interesting note, though, on my last stream last week, it's been a few days now. We did um, detect some potential evidence of price manipulation. So across four major exchanges at the same time last stream, I think it was Thursday night. Uh, <coughs> Four major exchanges were posting 24-hour lows for the Bitcoin slash USDT pairing at exactly $46,000. Exactly. To the cent. Four top exchanges. And then during the stream, that dropped to exactly $45,000 24-hour low. Hmm. To the cent. Right? To the cent. And then about two hours after the stream, it then dropped down to $44,000 to the cent on these four major exchanges. Hmm. So what's the chance of that? To the cent, to the cent, not $45,000 and one cent or 45,276 to the cent, dude. Please explain what's going on there. Well, uh, we, don't have, we don't have enough information to explain. Unfortunately, it could be a range of things from the somewhat innocent to the completely sinister. Uh, but because these uh, operations are not transparent to us, well, there's no way to make that determination. If I'm oh, a, if finance I, is transparent. If I'm a person, if I'm a person, I just have to consider that they're being completely sinister. Now that may not be true, but I have no way of of knowing or proving whether or not it is. So I have to assume the worst. That could be an algorithm that somehow that's the way it calculates, and it's always spitting out uh, round numbers like that. Uh, there's a potential harmless explanation. I'm Come not on, saying Rob. I believe it. I'm just Come saying on, that's Rob. what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, Rob. Mm -hmm. It's not an algorithm. Could be. It's manipulation. We cannot allow the price to drop beneath $45,000 mm -hmm. to the cent. We can't allow the price to drop below $44,000. Because, dude, you know how the prices are when they're live? Up and down, up and down. They move up constantly. They're always moving. Every fucking half a second, they're moving up and right, down. Right, right, right. Yeah. Dude, the 46000 that I, I, I first spoke about, I watched it. I watched it drop to 46,000, hmm. right? Five times it hit 45 clean and then jumped back up again. Five times in, in a matter of 10 minutes. Something was keeping may, the price. Maybe uh, some wall of orders was hit. All at that, I mean, people enter round numbers uh, for trades. No. Hmm. It's it's too ironic, man. It's too ironic. At playing devil's advocate, I mean, unfortunately, we don't know. You can speculate and say, I think it's probably this. But uh, at the end of the day, we don't know what it is that they're doing behind this black box of software that we use for a centralized exchange. And that's part of the problem. You go to a decentralized exchange that's open, something like Uniswap, anybody can audit the code that's being used to run the damn thing. That's a big difference. Mm. Because if something happens there like this, and, and you notice something like that, you yourself can go to the source code. And if you're not qualified to do it, you can pay somebody to have a look and say, why is this happening? And you'd have your answer. Um, with these centralized exchanges that are running software behind a server that we don't see and they don't talk about, I mean, it's considered, you know, industry sauce. They don't want to share that with people. Um, maybe now the big exchanges do. I don't know. Unfortunately, they can have any number of secret buttons that they hit that hold something at a particular price. I, I would have no way of knowing that they didn't. And <clears throat> due to their position, it's fucking suspect. These guys make money hand over fist, and wherever there's money, you know there's malfeasance, or, or at least the potential for it. So 
you know, again, by playing devil's advocate, it's strictly me trying to be fair. I always try to be fair. But if I'm standing 10 feet back, do I say it stinks over there? Yeah, it seems like it does. I'm not the only one who really thinks so, by the question. way. Hmm? Uh, I got no. an interesting question. Yeah. Because it's been, it's done my head in all day, all day, all night today. Yeah. You, you know what a hamburger is, obviously, right? I do know what a obviously. hamburger is, yes. Have you ever eaten a hamburger that's got ham in it? Have you ever seen a hamburger with ham in it? I have actually made hamburgers with ham in them, but that was because I put it in there. I've never seen a hamburger with ham. No. Yeah. They're not that's not typically I part of the recipe. I thought to myself, why do we call it a hamburger if no one uses ham in it? So I looked up the origins of the hamburger. And the hamburger was in fact made the way we know it, beef, salad, bread, all that shit. But it was invented by a dude in Germany in a town called Hamburg. Hamburg, yes. So, yeah, hamburger doesn't necessarily mean a burger with ham, yeah. as the name shows mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. It's named after a town where this concoction of ingredients mm -hmm. was first put together yes. to create what we know as a hamburger. Yes. But maybe should we, should, we should call them hamburgs. It, it, it's the same with a frankfurter. That was made in Germany too, yeah? Frankfurt, in yes. Frankfurt. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, just, I yeah. actually have made a verifiable ham burger, um, taking cured ham and mixing it in with the beef. I own a meat How grinder. I make my own hamburger meat. I've done lots of different, I've done jalapenos ground up directly into the meat. I've done lots of great stuff. Yeah, the ham was good. As you might imagine, you know, ham has that slight spicier, smokier flavor to it compared, you know, and mm. it's pre-cooked, so you don't have to worry about getting sick if you use the, the cured ham. And uh, mm. it, it ground up in with the meat, you're getting that fat mixed in with it too. Think about when you cook bacon. Bacon's another one that I've done. I've ground up bacon and put that in with the meat. And uh, yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. some of the best burgers you ever fucking had. Uh, the pepper burgers were very good with a little bit of hot, just a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit mixed in with the ground beef at the at the level where you're grinding it. Because now all those juices are interdispersing through the meat. It's not just the pieces. I mean, you could just take it and, and throw them in there, but um, this was the way to do it. Holy shit, because now it's flavoring all the different meat and it's cooking in it. And everywhere you bite, you get the flavor instead of just little pieces that end up in your mouth. So like if you mm. just broke up ham, it might not be that good. Or if you put a piece of ham over it, all right, you get some with every bite, but it's not fully mixed in. Uh, pork fats mixed with beef are fuck. I mean, what a combination. Holy shit. Now, the beef fat is you know, good, but a little bit of pork fat in there with it is something else. So maybe in Hamburg, yeah. when they went to go make the thing, they should have put in ham into the hamburger and then it would have made sense to to all us Eng english speaking people who are not from hamburg <laughs> well uh back in germany it's thought that 19th century <coughs> sailors brought back the idea of raw shredded beef known today as beef tartar tate after trading with the baltic provinces of russia huh isn't that they nice? used raw shredded beef in their hamburgers. You know, it's fucked up, but think about it. And we all, anybody that, that does things um, has the potential of, of this happening. But, you know, there's people that are famous in history and we know their names. And then in conjunction with their names, we know what they did, right? Uh, but then there are these other people in history that did something. And what they did was just, uh, I guess, so basic or profound that who they were became almost essentially unimportant to people, right? So then we remember their achievements. So here we have the hamburger. We know it was made in Hamburg, but history has no, I can't name, and you probably can't name, the motherfucker who was ingenious enough to actually put it all together. He's not as important as the idea of the hamburger. Well, I Googled it. I Googled it and his name hasn't popped up anyway. Yeah, he's nobody. He's nobody. He's a pile of bones somewhere in a box. That's all he is. Mm. And that's unfortunate. He should have taken the opportunity to name the thing after himself. It could maybe his name was was uh, uh, John Dick, so we could have had a Dick Burger, right? Or, or, <laughs> a Dicker. That's a Dicker. You want a Dicker? You want a Dicker? 
Um, That's what she said. Another interesting mm. and <laughs> Another interesting <laughs> fact. Do you know how many brains... Do you, do you know how many brains an octopus has? How many brains? Yeah. Two? Yeah. Nope. Eight? Nope. Nine. Nine? Nine. One for each, this, one for each leg and then an extra one. Yeah. <laughs> and the each brain is positioned under each arm. So you've got eight brains, one under each arm, and then the main brain in the head in the head. Uh. How trip is that? And if you think that's weird, right? Leeches have thirty two brains. Well, I'm much more fond of octopuses than leeches, let me just tell you that. But it, it, it does seem like, you know, at some point an asteroid, we know there's plenty of those, and they crashed into oceans, and now they're finding, uh, you know, bacteria and things on asteroids. The octopus is certainly a strange motherfucker. Don't it seem like maybe it came from space? Yeah, scientists have long said they believe that the octopus is the only living organism on, on planet Earth they suspect as coming from outer space. It seems it's like it must have, right? They're fucking else. weird. They're really fucking smart. I guess with mm -hmm. eight bra nine brains, you would be. But yeah, they're 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 very smart. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird creatures. Like nine brains, eight arms, suction cups. They can change color at will, camouflage themselves. Mm. Some are poisonous. Some are not. Mm. Uh, they're just and they're smart, as you said. Yeah. I remember in the uh, years ago, I think it was the Euro Cup, the World Soccer, the Euro Cup years ago. They had an octopus that would predict the winner of each game and has something like a ninety-five percent accuracy rate. Yeah, that get. I don't know if you heard about that on your your news, but this octopus was in like a fish tank, and they dropped the logos of the two teams that were playing, and it would pick the winner. And then they'd play, and he'd be right. Oh. You didn't hear about that? No, I, I, I did not hear about that. Um, I, I've heard you know, stories about their intelligence, not that one specifically. Uh, I'll look him up. They, they gave him a name as well. Well, I mean, then that must, the it, it must it must kind of be hellish then. I mean, I, I go to the aquarium, and they put octopuses in the uh, octopi. Octopi. They put them in the little, like, you know, glass cylinders. You can look at them. People eat them. Are you, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, sorry. I was just looking up the uh, a news article on that octopus. And I wasn't sure if I was cut out or not. So, yeah, I think his name was Paul the Octopus. He Paul? was used to predict the results of the... Yeah. Paul? He was used to predict the... Paul, Paul. He was used to predict the results of association football matches. Accurate predictions in the 2010 World Cup brought him to worldwide attention as an animal oracle. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe we should be, uh, maybe we should point an octopus at the crypto spear and have him pick winners. That might be something. And now that I looked like. that up. Now that I looked that up... Who the fuck so names an octopus Paul? That is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, now that we looked that up, I found another interesting article. Since we have so much crypto news to discuss tonight, uh -huh. this week, it's been so, so fucking exciting this week. Is this one about John, animal... John the octopus or maybe Dave the octopus? Don't know, don't know, but its headline is Eight Incredible Animal Oracles That Will Make You Forget Pung Sutoni Feel. Don't know what that means. Uh, he but, is he is the groundhog uh, that they look, I believe he's dead now, uh, that they look at uh, on Groundhog Day here to determine if winter uh, in Pennsylvania, it's a famous groundhog, Pung Sutoni okay. Phil, yeah. Well, here they've got <clears throat> Ellie the orangutan. So you could fill a football stadium with the animals that have tried to guess a Super Bowl champion over the years. None were as reliable as Ellie the orangutan of Salt Lake City's Hoggle Zoo, who mm. picked correct winner of seven consecutive NFL fin finals. Uh, he made his picks known by smashing paper, ma paper mache helmets 
emblazoned with the names of the competing teams. And the Oracle died in 2014. But yeah, that's Ellie the Oracle. Polly the Parrot is another one. This feathery financial servant from South Korea outperformed most humans in a competition to see which stocks would fare best. Polly's return on investment clocked in an eye-opening 13.7%, beating out all but two of the 10 two-legged contestants who averaged 4.6% loss. Then we have Oscar the Cat. Over the course of five years, this hairy thing of doom accurately predicted over 50 deaths at the Rhode Island nursing home where he resides. When Oscar curled up on the patient's bed, they were likely about to kick the bucket. Oh, this fuck! Seeming like a <laughs> That's oh, horrible. Shit. You see that cat uh, coming for you, you're like, no! No, I'm not ready yet, go away! <laughs> yep, uh, there's dogs. Dogs can reportedly tell when a woman is pregnant months before she can months before she can by sniffing out hormonal beer this article's written shit it's like someone from news btc wrote it uh dogs can reportedly tell when a human is pregnant months before she can by sniffing out hormonal behavioral and other prenatal changes like canine sonogram ah. like a canine sonogram uh, roland uh, can do that too <laughs> that's <laughs> one of the things we keep them around for I used to own a catfish. Um, it might seem like a disaster movie cliche, but critters from flamingos to toads have been shown to act differently before a force majeure. I don't know what that means. Majeure. Uh, a 16 year old, a 16 year long study out of Japan's Tokyo University suggested that certain catfish are sensitive to electrical activity preceding an earthquake. Okay. Um, well, they have those whiskers. And lastly, pencil. Oh, the one that you know of, Pung Sutorni Fiu, might be seen as the weather channel of meteorologist groundhogs, but other states brought boast their own fairy forecasters who complete with rival rodents like local. What the fuck is this article about? All right, so he could make weather predictions more accurate, twice the accuracy of weather forecasters. Yeah. But how, how would this animal say it's the weather? I don't know. Stratton Island Chuck is New York's hometown weather hog. Yeah, it, it has to do, I guess, with whether they'd come out of their hole. Okay. Yeah. But that, that one, the cat was freaky, man. That's fucked. Uh, animals are, uh, you know, uh, they're they're uh, they're not something that that we can really fully explain. And uh, I think people just say, "Oh, they're stupid," and leave it at that. But it doesn't seem to be the case across the board. I'm not. Right, I'm not overly fond. That. I'm not overly fond of orangutans. I, I that 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 experiment sounds like a fucking nightmare. Yeah, but after hearing all that shit now, if, if I'm at someone's place and they've got a cat and the cat curls up next to me, I'm going to shit myself. Well, it's got to be that cat. My cat curls up next to me all the time. I'm not dead. Mm, yeah, I suppose. Maybe it was just that cat. I, I mean, if, if you figure it may have uh, adapted some behavior. I mean, think about where it lived, dude. It lived in a place where people were constantly dropping dead. So the cat obviously detected some kind of pattern. Yeah, they say 60% of people who move into nursing homes don't make it after nine months. Yeah. And if you lived in New York over the last year, that number was double. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. And he laughs about it. He yeah. laughs about it. Uh, what can you do? If you, if you didn't laugh, we'd cry, Darko. I'm not going to apologize for that. Um, so here we go. To the audience what, what, watching... That, to the audience watching, doesn't Rob look sexy with those glasses? Very like a sophisticated, sexy woman uh, with a beard. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know that word. Is, that's one of the funnier words in the English language, Darko. Uh, sophisticated, because the the origin of the word is from it's got sophist. Many meanings, yeah. Well, it's from sophist, yeah. which is basically a bullshitter, right? So oh, when, really? when we're saying that somebody's sophisticated, it means they're uh, essentially a cultivated bullshitter. 
It's funny because some people use the word to describe someone of luxury sort of thing. Correct. Like high class. Yes. But then also sophisticated means problematic as well. Well, oh, I, this computer sophisticated, you know. C c consider its origins. Um, yeah, it, it, it so is very interesting that people use that as a compliment when, you know, in actuality, it should not be taken so much as a compliment. But to say somebody sophisticated is is more or less by, you know, the origins of the word saying that they just pull shit out of their ass. Yeah, but like similar word, another word when they say someone yelled at me. To me, if someone yells, they're screaming at you. That's my definition of yelling. Yeah, but then I hear other people say, "Oh, I got told I did this wrong. I got yelled at." Mm -hmm. for being told I did something wrong. That's not yelling. Mm. Where do they get that definition from? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I, you know. I, I don't know. Humans I, are retarded. I, I, yeah, I mean, you know, people... I, I, people, right? I mean, words are an ever-evolving uh, sort of thing. Um, Jim Morrison said they resemble walking sticks. It's true. Um, you know, that they're not... We lean on them, but... Uh, to say this means this, it, it, there is no science to it. The words are one of the humanities. They're not, they're not like biological science. Um, and believe it, but Rob, awesome that we brought this up about the word shit uh, because something similar, sort of relevant, happened in the crypto space in the last twenty-four hours. DeFi token CRV, otherwise known as Curve, Curve. spikes after reports PayPal acquired unrelated custody firm curve so what happened here was there was a, an announcement where paypal bought out this company called curve and people being dumb cunts in the crypto sphere because we know there's a lot of them in the crypto sphere thought that paypal was actually buying the curve brand the curve crypto brand the one with the coin that you can see on CoinGecko, the Curve coin. Yeah. So dumb cunts, without doing their homework, without doing their research, acting on compulsion once again, because they leave their funds on the exchanges to make these quick, irrational decisions, went out and pumped Curve token, but the company PayPal bought was a totally different company with the same name. Mm. And these numb nuts all pumped Curve token for no reason, and now it's falling back again. Mm. Unbelievable. it. Oh, I can believe it. And you know what? I, I, on another day, when PayPal actually did buy Curve, those people that ran and jumped would be among the first in and would do the best. So, you know, that, that that's the, uh, that's I guess, the trade-off to running without thinking. Sometimes you're going to uh, luck out, and sometimes you're going to be on the wrong side of something like this. Uh, we, we, we've seen that in the uh, traditional stock market as well, uh, confusion over company names. Uh, often what will happen is that the stock exchange will step in uh, at that point and they'll say, you know, the uh, the uh, the changes in this stock's price are due to confusion. So we're halting this stock until that confusion abates. Now, y mm. you can, I'm not so much a fan of that. They actually do that, do they? Well, oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, wow. If if wow. it's determined, you know, they'll, they'll make their reasons public, but if it's determined that, you know, a, a company is trading on some you know, accident like that. Uh, it doesn't happen right away in all cases, but that's something they can and will jump in on, sure. Um, oh, in, in a highly regulated honest. marketplace like that, stability is, is the number one goal. And it, it's not fairness or, um, you know, setting these rules and saying, these are the rules, everybody has to play by them, but the, the rules will take us where we may. And <clears throat> I guess you could say that's what bothers people like me, other people, um, who prefer those kind of environments, tell me the rules so that I know what they are, and then I will look at them and I'll determine my behavior afterwards. Um, the stock market is not like that. The stock market is, we're going to watch what you do, and if you do something that we decide we don't like or isn't kosher, we're just going to come in and put the kibosh on it. That's a completely different arrangement. That's not tell me the rules. Yeah. Rob, also... Also, to more numb, not dumb idiots in crypto news, some moron paid $320,000 for the rarest Pepe NFT. 
Three hundred twenty thousand dollars for a picture. God love him. A picture. Ugh, God love him. He could have screenshotted. He could have screenshotted and saved it. Ah, he wouldn't be the owner of the original. Dude, it's it's just a picture of Homer green with red lipstick. Oh. Homer from The Simpsons. Okay. Uh, let me send it to you, Rob. Let me send it so you can see what I'm. No, don't here. send it. No. And yeah. No. I won't send it on here then. I'll send it on Twitter. Oh, I can't, dude. Because I'm tethering tonight, I cannot access my Twitter. It just won't load. Oh, well, we'll um, do it at the end of the show. No, if you, if you send it in Zoom, some point it's telegraph. Gonna, it's going to put this ugly box up. What? It's on Coin Telegraph. Uh. Yeah. Um, and to my other point with regards to my Twitter not loading because I am tethering because my main internet connection is down. Where is Pepe? Uh, I also, I also tried looking up. I saw earlier tonight a tweet from Peter Schiff. You got it? <laughs> now that's would you, would you pay? Would you pay three hundred twenty thousand dollars for that piece of shit? I'm the wrong person to ask. I wouldn't pay one dollar for it. I'm the wrong person. You're the wrong I'm person. I'm going to pay $1 for it. You're the wrong person to ask. But I'm asking you. Huh? I'm, I, I, I'm also the wrong person to ask. I wouldn't pay that, but... Oh, I thought you said I was the wrong person to ask. You are as well. You said you wouldn't pay. Nah. Yeah, well... Um. Also, Rob, there, I wanted to bring this up, but... Guy comes to my again, door and trying my... to sell me encyclopedias, he gets the door slammed in his face. So, you know, but they sell plenty of encyclopedias, that's all I'll say. Yeah. I was going to load up a, a, a tweet from Peter Schiff earlier, and I can't load my Twitter up. Uh -huh. And he ended up calling crypto investors dumb. <laughs> I don't know if you have access to your Twitter now to see it but i can't let my twitter to retrieve it now i, I don't know if i'd be able to, to find it in with all the other uh uh tweets of him calling crypto users dumb I, he thinks we're dumb i don't know no, it was a new one it was a new tweet it's not long ago yeah he doesn't and like, then someone he doesn't posted like uh, yeah but someone posted a reply to that tweet with a screenshot of Peter Ship's website, and it's, there's a section of it saying you can pay for his services in Bitcoin. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what else? You know what else with him? His uh, his boy is into crypto. Yeah, total opposite to him. Yeah, total opposite <laughs> to him. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Ah. Uh. Pumping his show. Hey, here's something we agree on: is that maybe Ray Dalio is about to go over to the dark side on Bitcoin too. Mm -hmm. I, 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 the, over to the dark side. I don't know, some guy. But uh, yes, I, I, I consider this the dark side. You don't know the power of the dark side. And I think everybody should join Roland. us. Roland. Well, Roland, Roland is the dark is the side. Yeah. Power. Uh, everybody, yeah, who knows? This guy's got a hole. He's pumping his show. I don't even want to look at this. Uh, can you imagine waking up and that's you? I couldn't. I mean, fuck. If, I, if, I, if I'm ever just an old fuck like that, somebody just do the favor to the world and me and put put a put a fork in it. I mean, really, just... That's it. Walk me down. You know, this yeah. is for your own good. And walk me down to... Peter uh, Schiff. What? Peter Schiff or Roland? Peter Schiff or Roland? Me, if I ever resemble Peter Schiff. Ah, you're talking about Peter Schiff. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you're talking about Peter Schiff or Roland. No, no, they, in this case it was Peter Schiff. But speaking of Roland, He's uh, miserable, maybe, we should, he? maybe we should check in with him. You want to check in with Roland? You want to see how the motherfucker's doing? No, nope. you don't? Well, that's too bad because nope. we're going to. People, uh, we, uh, we, we're sorry to do this to you, but we're going to take a break. Uh, and then when we come back, we promise we'll actually do some cryptocurrency news for you instead of bantering on about inane bullshit uh, after this. What's up, guys? I 
your uh, favorite part of the show, your boy Roland here. Uh, sorry if I'm in a bit of a salty mood tonight. Uh, someone who shall remain nameless dropped his laptop in the fucking bathtub. Um, so I wanted to kind of touch on something we discussed prior and falling for phishing schemes and why that could potentially be bad and not even necessarily bad for you, the customer, or for, for you, the just the normal meat in the seat using, you know, just sitting in front of your computer doing God knows what. Um, you know, we're talking about companies, um, you know, and that's, that's ransomware. Some of these people, when they click on these link, will infect computers, and then it just hops from endpoint to endpoint and infects the computer with ransomware. Now with what's, you know, some of you people don't know what ransomware is, this will completely encrypt and lock all of your files. You have a time limit to unlock those files if you pay them a certain amount of money in cryptocurrency. Um, so this is bad in the crypto community because that's kind of the image that the cryptocurrency Currency community, it's the stereotype that's unfairly labeled with crypto and that it's used by the criminal element, which it's, I mean, that couldn't be further from the truth, but you can't, it's like talk to a brick wall, you, you can't get through to morons, so why try? Uh, but to tie into what I was discussing prior is one, don't be a dipshit and fall for that. Actually read your emails. Reading reading is not hard. You start top to bottom, left to right, take Tylenol for headaches and might all for cramps. Um, unless you're in one of them weird countries with the language that goes fucking backwards or up and down and scrolls and shit. Um, Reading, reading is not hard. And Drury LaForge on uh, Re Reading Rainbow once said, reading is fundamental. Which, sorry to get off topic here, but it's what I do. Uh, LeVar Burton, brilliant, brilliant motherfucker. This guy went from being a humble slave to becoming literate and then graduated Starfleet Academy. I mean, you can't have more of a success story than LeVar Burton. Slave, learn to read, sharply. But there's a time between there. Um, pause, crypto degenerate children, and look up the cameo video for Word Up. Lavar Burton is in Word Up. You're welcome. All right, what were we talking about? Oh, you're right. Shit, what were we talking about? No, uh, ransomware. If you get this, because you're dumber than dirt and you didn't watch my last show where I told you how to avoid this, do not pay to get your files back. There's a chance you won't even get your files back. You might just, you might send them, well, we'll just be fair and say one Bitcoin and they won't unlock your shit. Or there's no guarantee that the files, that the ransomware is actually gone, and they might decide a week later to lock it again and ask for more money. Um, you're a dumbass if you pay them. Actually, you guys can quote me on that. Um, expect to see you're a dumbass if you pay, if you pay the ransomware t-shirts. You know, I mean, it's, I actually want, I want that shit on my headstone. You're a dumbass if you pay for ransomware. Uh, here's what you do. You quarantine the fucking computer immediately when it happens. You wipe that fucking hard drive. Now I know some of you, well, I, I don't wanna say, I don't wanna say boomers. Some of you older folks are sitting here. What about my, what about my files? It's called backups. Put your backups on an external hard drive. There's, there's cloud services. Um, I mean, it's, 
I keep telling the bosses to stop paying for the Office 365 license at Bacon Mines because none of these fuckers use OneDrive, but it's it's available. Um, the uh, the gentleman that drowned his laptop in the bathtub uh, actually used it, so you know, I, I gold gold star for him. I I, I won't mention any names uh, who did it, but I he was in the bathtub with someone. Uh, of a Australian, New Zealandish accent. Um, chick got crazy. But I don't mention names because I don't disclose uh, details of my tickets. But it is what it is. I don't. I. I, I don't judge. There's shit I wish I didn't see. And I don't know how you keep from dropping a cigarette and or how how you can you know keep holding on to a cigarette and drop your, you know, $2,000 laptop, but he figured out a way. Uh, but yeah, just keep backups. Then if you do, if you are stupid enough to fall for ransomware, your IT team needs to quarantine that machine and wipe and re-image it. Um, that's really all I had for tonight. So uh, I'll send it back to the guys. Rob, I hope you like your new laptop. We will come back to the people. How'd you like that, Darko? Well, that was fucking shit. You know what? 10 seconds in, I left the screen. I went to my laptop. And I started watching Soul Glow commercials. Remember Soul Glow from Coming yeah. to America? Oh, yeah. That commercial, I watched that about five or six times because I'd rather watch that five, six times than what I just experienced for 10 seconds. And I found it very entertaining, very enthralling. It was like, just let your soul glow, baby. Mm. Let it shine so silky smooth. Just let it, you know, that's, that commercial, mm. Soul Glow. And then at the end, you see the other dude on stage, Going sexual chocolate. Remember that scene from Coming to America? Sexual chocolate. Uh. Give it up for sexual chocolate. Uh. No one's clapping. Sexual chocolate. Do you remember it? Kind of like now, nobody's clapping. Yeah, I know. No shit. <laughs> but one thing that is worth clapping for, bro. One thing that is worth clapping for. Have you seen the new Mortal Kombat theatrical trailer uh. for the next movie? Huh? The new Mortal Kombat movie trailer. Have you seen it? I have not. Bro, you gotta check that shit out. And I encourage all the viewers watching this to also check it out. Not now, after the stream ends, not during this stream, but dude, there's a fight scene between Sub-Zero and another dude. And Sub-Zero, he slashes the dude in the fight. And as the blood splatters out, cause you remember Sub-Zero? He throws those ice things, yeah. he makes ice. Yeah. So he slashes this dude in the waist. And as the blood splits out, Sub-Zero freezes his blood in mid air turns it into an ice sword and stabs him with it. Oh. Creative. How fucking sick is that? Yeah. It's fucking sick, man. Much I, I, than I was the, uh, uh, I, in Mortal Kombat, I used to be known as the king of the leg sweep. Oh, you, were you one of those button mashes with the same move over and over again? Yeah, well, I, I wasn't right away, but I, I played with some guys that like, just wanted to lord over you and then throw in your face because they would sit all day playing the game and I would not. I did not own it and I wouldn't spend my time playing it all day anyway. So they got super good and they're like, oh, come on, play, play, play. And I'm like, oh, all right, but if you're just going to mop. And, and so then, you know, I'd be in there 10 seconds and they would just mop the floor with me. Now they're laughing. OK, now we got a problem. So now I'm going to figure out how I'm going to play this game that I'm going to win because I'm sick of hearing you laughing. And so now we're going to, yeah. So I would like to oh, that's cheap, man. That's cheap. I don't know because the scoreboard says that I won. So you didn't. So you can please <laughs> shut the fuck up and go fuck yourself, as the Iron Sheik would say, because I'm tired of hearing it. And maybe if you're a more graceful winner, people wouldn't have to resort to these tactics. You now, I, no apologies. Yeah, uh None. I don't know why, but what you just said reminded me of an old, old, old prank call from years ago with the Jokey Boys. Oh, the Jokey Boys. Up, yeah, and they rang up a dentist place. 
and I put on this different voice, of course, and I go, oh, I want to call to complain, the dentist, he hurt me. And they're going, oh, what happened? And he goes, I went in there, and he puts me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> then I wake up, blood everywhere, pants unbuttoned. <laughs> <laughs> he kept going back to the pants unbuttoned. <laughs> so he went for a dental surgery and he woke up covered in blood with his pants unbuttoned. God! <laughs> that, that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so this is all nice, but we did promise these people some fucking news, so let's get to it here. Uh, in exchange... Yeah, that. <laughs> in exchange... Demands that users return Bitcoin bought for 6K during a tech glitch. Uh, an apparent I saw that article. Yeah. Yeah. An Philippines. An apparent glitch on PDAX temporarily dropped Bitcoin prices by 88% and saw trading yeah. suspended. The exchange held a press yeah. conference yesterday to explain what happened. Uh, so they, were, they uh, dropped it down to roughly uh, $6,100. On February 16th, mm -hmm. as we know, the price was nowhere near there on February 16th. Uh, a number of PJAX customers withdrew their purchase Bitcoin. I'm sure they did. Smart. Smart. <laughs> they did not because want to the leave ones it. Who yeah, because the ones who didn't withdraw can't withdraw it now. They took it back, Yeah. apparently. Mm -hmm. Which is bullshit because they bought it, they bought it. That was the market price. That was the spot price. That's it. It's theirs, yeah? Mm. This also happened... At the same time as the same issue with Kraken Exchange last week, how we spoke about how Kraken was showing seven seven hundred dollar ETH prices mm -hmm. and fifteen cent Cardano prices, mm -hmm. this was around about the same time that it happened. And I believe that exchange you're talking about is the Philippines' largest crypto exchange, and they've started sending out legal notices to the people who withdrew that Bitcoin that they bought for cheap. But I think they've got no legal obligation to chase them, no legal right. Well, it, 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 it's raised a lot of questions, and it's it's it certainly um, you know maybe some that the exchange doesn't want to answer. But here, here's a, qu a great quote from the owner of the exchange or the representative, I guess, uh, CEO. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah. Now this is a great quote because here they are. They're trying to make the case that people should give them back. So they're explaining what happened. And in doing so, you have this this gem here. It's very understandable that a lot of users will feel upset. They were able to buy what they thought an order was there for Bitcoin at very low prices. Okay, I'm with you there. There's going to be some people who are upset. Uh, but unfortunately, this is great. The underlying Bitcoins were never in the possession of the exchange. So there's never really anything there to be bought or sold uh, now is it just what? me or does it sound like this guy is admitting for all to hear uh, to fraud because if he's selling something that he doesn't have that's fraud uh, he's saying that the exchange the bitcoins yeah. were never there and, and so they didn't uh, maybe he wants to think that one through uh, and, and come up with a new quote mm. because that one's pretty terrible not to mention the optics on it are absolutely horrible uh, they just admitted that they're selling things that they don't have well maybe yeah maybe up until that point that's what they were doing mm. and then for whatever reason glitch bug whatever they ended up selling the real thing by accident not fake volume mm. And the smart ones quickly withdrew it, and they can't get it back now. So. Right. Right. Mm. It, it, it has sparked debate, uh, according to this article. Uh, they mention that, but they don't get too much into the actual debate. I'm sure we can use our imaginations to determine what it is. Uh, some people would say, oh, you, you know, that was a mistake, and you should give it back. Other people will say, well, that, that's a fucking marketplace, and they posted that price. And if I walk in yep. to a, a, a CVS around here, and I see a, a gold bar, and it's got a, a 10 cent price tag on it, they have to sell it to me. The law here says that they have now, they can immediately take that price down but and not sell it to anybody else. But they have to sell it to me at that price because they've advertised it. Tough luck. Yeah. Yep. Tough titties. Yep. Now, Tough luck. there's Tough one, I guess, now, if you, that's a, a legal standpoint. From an ethical standpoint, I would yeah, say, but... I would say, what is the history of the exchange? And that would guide my sense of ethics for how I would deal with them. 
All right, but Rob, just quickly though, if you go to the supermarket and you see your favorite milk that you always get from two dollars, let's say, you have a favorite now, milk with darker? A price tag. Nah, for your milk and shit, man. For your coffee and shit, yeah. Like you have milk with your coffee, yeah. I have whatever milk is available. I don't have a favorite milk. Yeah, you have a preferred milk. You you would have a preferred brand of milk that goes well with your coffee that you usually look for. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. so, no, man, speaking. but please do keep talking. You're digging a hole here. <laughs> you have your favorite milk? Right. What, what's your favorite milk? <laughs> I, get, I get a particular milk that is suitable for the coffee that I consume, right? <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to get you a glass of your favorite milk after the show, Darko. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, this is a really good point I want to bring up. And I'm sure you'll agree. That I'm was sure a you'll good agree point. with me, right? That was a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll shut up. I'm walk, done. I'm done. You, you walk into a supermarket, you get the milk that you want for your coffee, which you normally buy at $2, let's say, hypothetically speaking. Okay. And... You've been buying this shit for the last six months. Every time you go to the supermarket, you know the location, you know the brand, you know the price. Oh, it's your favorite, yeah. So, yeah, it's your favorite. And then one day you walk into the supermarket to get some more milk. And you see the same milk that you've been buying for the last six months at $2, now advertised for 10 cents. Mm -hmm. You buy it for 10 cents. Mm -hmm. You pay for it for 10 cents. Mm -hmm. You take it home and once you go home let's say you come back to the supermarket the following week they can't turn around and say to you hey you rob <laughs> you bought this milk for 10 cents last week but it was really meant to be two dollars mm -hmm. we want the milk back or you pay the full price mm -hmm. that we normally charge they can't do that by law it's whatever the price of the product is advertised sure yeah and that's what you pay sure so they have no i don't know what it's like in the philippines man but from what I know, common sense, common knowledge is whatever the price is, if you pay for it, it's yours. It doesn't matter. And that they is the X up, factor. I mean, you know, the laws in the Philippines, they have their own laws and they may be different from the laws in the States are similar to what you described. So there would be no grounds for them to come and say you have <laughs> to all. give that back. Um, I all. would presume the Philippines would be the same, but that may be a lofty assumption. They could say something completely different. And there are countries that don't have that. Uh, you know, you, if you go to Europe, you'll see more laws that tend to throw stuff like that on its head where it's oh no mm. you know it, it, we have to work this out um the, the the problem it becomes an ethical question when so what i think back to is you were telling the story last week where there was a glitch and you were credited back for the glitch now the kraken it, exchange if one, the yes. same thing happened on kraken and they had done this for you already and that was the business relationship that was established it's hard to make the case that ethically you should take that tack with them. Can you see my point? Yeah, if there but... was a glitch and, and you were going to be hurt by it and they made it right, you're now going to turn around when they have a glitch and they're telling you, you know, this is honestly what happened. And you're going to say, nah, man, fuck mm. you. I'm not giving it back. Well, to me, then now you're a dick. I mean... It, yeah, but the difference there is people got liquidated. They lost money because of this glitch when realistically they should not have lost money. Okay, well, so that was realistically, if there's a glitch. glitch and the exchange loses money. They have to now go buy these Bitcoins to give them to all the people that they honored that price for. They're losing money. No? It's hard to say because they're saying one thing then changing the mind the next day. So they're all, first they said it was a glitch and then they came out and said, no, it wasn't a glitch. It was actual spot prices. Well, I'm not talking about these guys. I'm talking about the larger question. Uh, and we're using Kraken as an example because that's where this other one happened. So, you know, I'm, I'm you know, making it fictional on purpose. If it was Kraken and this happened, they said, oh, mm. you know, $6,000 Bitcoin, a bunch of people bought them. They came out the next day and said that was a mistake. You know, obviously the prices were nowhere near there. Any reasonable person would know that this was a glitch, uh, you know, and, and now you're going to say you, the person who they just made right the week before because there was a glitch and it worked in your favor. You, you see, you see my point? I, I, and I and I'm not saying that it's never appropriate to say, no, this is the law. And if this was an exchange that had previously 
done something like halted trading on me or, you know, done something else that cost me money that I didn't think was fair, you better believe I, I'll hold on to that Bitcoin with my dying breath. But yeah, I agree. It, you're right. But for yeah. somebody, for for an entity that didn't behave like that, treating them like that doesn't seem like the right thing to do. I would expect people in that situation, when a certain type of business relationship has been established, one of respect. Now you treat the business with respect. Now, I only advocate treating people and businesses with disrespect if they themselves are disrespectful. I, I don't go around doing that as a matter of course. So how do you think the public, the crypto public would react if this happened on Binance and I was selling $6,000 Bitcoins on Binance and then the next day Binance comes out and says, oh, everyone who bought and withdrew that Bitcoin, we want it back. Yeah. How do you think the crypto sphere will respond? It, it would depend on the individual, frankly. I've seen people have very good experiences with them and I've seen people have bad experiences with them. I know they made, there was a hack and they, they made some people right from that, um, you know, restored the money to their account and the money was gone they had to eat that and maybe they have insurance and they have other things fine but at the oh, end yeah. of the day it is being eaten on that side so that the individual can be made whole would should those people who benefited from that then go and say uh-uh that was the price that's what was up and so all my way and and not no, no back the other way i i never in my life dude i don't treat people like that i don't treat anybody like that that's bullshit. So, it, you know, so it's you hard to know. Bitcoin? What's that? So would you return the Bitcoin? In that situation, I would. Wow. If I was a, if I was a person. Yeah, I'm sure there'd be many people that wouldn't. If I was a person who had previously been treated well by an entity, why am I going to hurt them? That doesn't seem like the right thing to yeah. do. I'll make my money another way. Well, I don't I'll have to step what. on somebody's head. But if they, you better believe me, right. if they stepped on my head or if they hassled me or if I heard of them doing it to other people prior to that, I would be ruthless. Mm. Uh, you know, th there's a flip yeah. side to that. Well, I can tell you now, man, one Bitcoin in the Philippines is a lot of money. <sighs> well, a lot of money. The dollar a uh, day. You could, buy houses. you could buy houses with one Bitcoin, dude, in the Philippines. The 6,100 uh, price tag equated to 300,000 uh, Philippine pesos. So I don't know what that buys, you know, it's just a number difference, but if those go further in the Philippines, like you're saying, then it's a substantial amount of money for some people. Well, let me look up what a price of cigarettes are in the Philippines, I'll tell you. Because that's important, cigarette prices. <laughs> if my internet oh, it will it is loading so one 20 pack of cigarettes is a hundred pesos and you said one bitcoin is three hundred thousand pesos. no 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 i said the sixty one hundred dollars is three hundred thousand oh, are you serious yeah oh wow so then all right let's do a bitcoin conversion here quickly Oh, wow, dude. All right, so one Bitcoin in the Philippines is 2.3 million pesos. And you get a pack of cigarettes for 100, you're doing all right. 100 pesos. Um, a one-way ticket on local transport, one way is 10 pesos. Uh, you can get a lot so of one-way on transports for a Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Beer prices. One 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 beer is sixty pesos. Wow. Sixty pesos. You get a lot of beers yeah. for a Bitcoin. Now Philippine pesos to US dollar. So one beer costs a dollar twenty three US. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah. A dollar twenty three. For one beer? For one beer. And a pack of cigarettes cost two dollars and six cents. All right, that's good. Yeah. So two point three million pesos from one bitcoin. Right. Is a shit ton of money in the Philippines, man. And, and it might be life changing for some people. Listen, I, in, 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 in saying that 
you know, there may be cases where the right thing to do is give it back. I, I'm not saying it would be easy for somebody to do, but, you know, that's the test of, of somebody's ethics. Anybody can do, quote unquote, the right thing when it's easy for them. You know, I find 50 cents mm -hmm. on the ground and give it back to you. Boy, I'm a great guy, huh? I did the right thing. You know, doing it when it hurts, not as many people would show up. I fully acknowledge that. I understand that. And, and, and people that had very little their whole lives may see that as an opportunity. Um, doesn't mean it's ethical. I may understand it, and mm. I, I may not even say, well, that's it, gates of hell for you. But, uh, you know, it, it, I, I, you can't get me to say that it's ethical at that point if, oh, if maybe. they've been treated with respect in the past and mm. other users have what do you been. call wash trading and fake volume respect flash crashes <clears throat> and dips caused by the manipulative exchanges respectful and treated right i mean these are exchanges they're not a normal business they're not a normal honest business like your local supermarket or your local furniture shop yeah this is a manipulative centralized crypto exchange that controls the market they flash crash they dump they keep prices down they wash trade and you do business with them and when the glitch is in your favor, you're perfectly happy to, to take the money. You know, I understand the picture you're painting. I'm just saying it's not very attractive. And at that point, you say, all right, well, you do you, man, but yep. uh, that's a little fucked up. Uh, it... Look, in any other business, yeah, let's say I bought a car that was worth $20,000 and I paid $3,000 for it, and they I meet the fault, then yes, I would give the money back. I think I'd give the money back to any business except for a manipulative, evil, corrupt crypto exchange, to be honest. Well, I mean, I'm a nice guy. I'd give it back to anyone else, just right. not to them. Well, I, it, again, I say it depends. Have it, it, the industry being what it is, there are some players that are making more of an effort than others. And I mean, you know, at some extent, at some point, you come around to the question of, you know, was this a good faith effort to do the right thing? It doesn't matter if they do the right thing with everything else. OK, uh, mm. I, I, what I harp on is the p potential. Let's just say and we're, we're fictionalizing again, but let's just say this was cracking. And let's just say there is an overlap. What, what should that person do? What should somebody who last week was thanking Kraken for doing the quote unquote right thing? Those were your words. OK, doing the right thing. How nice. Here's your fucking daisies. OK, and then you're going to turn around the next week and do the wrong thing by your words because mm. it favors you that is the very definition of unethical yeah but then you've got to look at another thing margin trading and the exchanges are known to deliberately push down the price to liquidate people millions of dollars yeah through manipulation with margin trading so do they really deserve to be treated the same way in the right way when the, if, if the time comes well, I, I, I would say you should never. Off, I would say you should never come to that because these are good reasons not to do business with somebody. If you think that, but if you're going to jump in the pool and you're satisfied doing business with them, then you can operate like a fucking person. And, and I mean, if somebody's shitting all over you directly, okay, I can understand somebody making the case that no, 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 no. Ethically, I'm fine here. Okay, and here, here are the cases where they shit over me, shit directly over other people as individuals. Okay, wash trading, I'm sorry. That may be sleazy and it may not be something we want to see, but it doesn't shit directly on an individual. Them locking your funds, mm. them saying, you know, we're undoing a trade that you did, that's fucking a person. And in, in the case- Oh yeah, and, and failing to execute, and failing to execute stop losses, which I hear a lot about, mm -hmm. a lot. A so lot. if you're in that environment, I can understand somebody taking a mercenary attitude. The exchange took the mercenary attitude first. But what I'm saying is, mm. is clearly there's an anomaly when, I mean, I, I'm going through the news and it jumps right out at me. It has to be an anomaly, right? When I see an article about Kraken making things right or, you know, people giving money back, you almost never hear of that because usually they'll just pocket it. I'm saying is that the, the ethical thing to do is to reward that type of behavior. And I mean, it, just put yourself up there. Let's say you dipped your toe in the water and, and you want to try to, you know, you're going to try to be the person that does the right thing. And I'm not saying you're perfect at it yet. 
okay? But then something like this happens, and every single person to a man and woman says, fuck you, we're not giving it back. What is your attitude going to be in the future towards those users? And why should you respect them? It's it's a large, you know, it, we tend to look at things in black and white, and they're almost always never black and white. There is no good guy, bad guy. There's this large, you know, sort of fishbowl that we're all trying to operate in. And one action results in another. And so if everybody here does the wrong thing, I don't know, I never heard of this exchange, but you can be sure it will harden their hearts. And the next time, it may be the little guy that's on the side of the glitch. And that's actually, if the exchange is corrupt, that's more likely. And the glitch may not be a glitch. And they'll be standing there saying, well, what do you expect? Okay, none of you, none of you fucking got your, your $6,000 Bitcoin. Okay, you have eyes. You looked at the screen and you saw the price on your other ticker that said it was fucking worth $50,000. you are not stupid. And don't pretend that you are for the purposes of saying you're entitled to that money. You know that Bitcoin was not $6,000. You know this. Mm -hmm. And you can smile and go to your grave and say, oh, but you can't prove that I know it. You know it. I'm saying you know it. Yeah. Because anybody knows it. So what are we really talking about? And those are the questions that pop in my mind. I fully understand why somebody may not be thinking that way but that that type of thinking has consequences and we serve to bring more of the negative into the world as opposed to the positive uh, it, it, it wouldn't be an easy thing to do but if i had for example again forgetting pdax let's say it was kraken and you told me that story now we won't even make it the same person but last week you told the story about how they made things right with you and let's say this week i benefited from kraken i'd give the money back I've, I've been in situations like that in my life. I'm also the type of person that'll take a whole pile of money and burn it if that's what needs to be done. And people don't understand that. They think that's just talk. They think, I don't care about money when it comes down to uh, ethics and people and things like that. I, I, yeah, but I, what, if, what, if, what if they were lying? The Filipino exchange was lying. What if the spot prices really were 6000 Maybe due to lack of volume, maybe? Then Those it, orders, sell orders? Right. then you should see and that it shouldn't just be there i mean you should certainly see that reflect elsewhere well, if you go on if you go on a very low volume exchange that no one's ever heard of and there's sell orders from three months ago that haven't been touched or a year ago even dead exchange mm -hmm. i'm sure you'll find some bitcoin for just a few thousand dollars somewhere mm -hmm. if you look hard enough at a low almost no volume exchange mm -hmm. so if you're going to buy from there for two thousand dollars a coin what, they're going to come around and say, oh, no, that was a glitch, even though they know it wasn't a glitch. It was just due to actual real spot trading prices. Mm -hmm. They they could see it as a way to profit for themselves by saying, oh, you, got, you can either return it or you can keep it, but we'll give you at the full price, but with, the, with a discount, a small discount. And they, they can make some quid that way as well. They, they could do that, trust. but if they want it back, you know, given the desperation that it sounds like is going on here, they want it back. So it probably wasn't something that was done on purpose. Um, but, uh, you know, power dynamics, size often determines the power dynamic, but not always. And here is a case where the, the power dynamic has shifted to the user. And this may be an opportunity for somebody to say, well, okay, but there's going to be some transparency here. And so we're going to hire an independent auditor if you want this Bitcoin back. All of us are going to get together. You're going to pay the bill for this independent auditor, and they're going to come in and determine forensically whether or not that was a glitch. Okay, now we're getting eyes on the exchange's operations, and who knows what else might be uncovered. But if the power dynamic has shifted because you're the one holding the money that they want it back. So, um, you know, they might have no choice. And then we can determine, oh, it was a glitch. Oh, it wasn't. I get your point, and it's absolutely possible that it wasn't. Yeah. In this case, I'd have to say, given the starkness of the difference of price, $6,100 versus like 50 at the time, 50,000, that's that's a big fucking difference. I, I got to believe that, if, especially yeah, but... if it just happened in a minute, that that was a glitch. Yeah, well, look at Cardano last week from $1.15 to $0.15 cents on Kraken. And ETH again dropped down to $700. And the day after, Kraken came out and said it was not a glitch. That yeah. was the actual spot prices. Yeah. So who do you believe? Who do you, who do you believe? Well, yeah. I, I can't say for certain who you believe, but I'll tell you what the answer isn't. The answer isn't believing whoever has... Well, what's the truth then? Not believe. What's the truth? 
the problem is this for a lot of people the truth the truth seems to be whichever outcome favors them and, and that's the reasoning that i would sort of <laughs> well okay but let's just not pretend that that's not what's happening with a lot of people right okay and if that's your reasoning yeah. i don't accept it <clears throat> Bro, this is a good point there you go where, where gonna... do you stand i'll do darko's routine tonight Put it in the fucking comments. Maybe he'll read it. I won't. But let's know. How do you fucking feel about this? What would you do? Um, maybe you've been yeah. fucked in the ass by the man your whole life and you no, no way would you give it back. Well, maybe you can make the case. But if there is an afterlife, that's going to be between you and God at that point. You're not going to fool him if he exists. Her. I don't know what the fuck God is. I don't know if there is a God. But just letting you know, a lot of people seem to think that there is. So um, maybe when you get there, you might want to not have so many things to explain. Um, I don't know, but we'll leave it where it is. Uh, SEC's getting a new... A new guy, Gary Gensler, um, is apparently uh, has bipartisan support, so he's likely to be confirmed in his role as the SEC chairman. Now, the interesting thing about Gary Gensler is that he has had uh, roles in blockchain projects in the past, uh, and he stuck up for Bitcoin, uh, saying uh, get, uh, today before Congress or yesterday that um, the uh, he, Bitcoin was not under the SEC's purview, uh, definitively doesn't consider it in a, a security it is not a security and therefore not something that the sec can regulate said that in front of congress and, and this is the guy that's <laughs> looking to be the chair um uh, the uh reception in the crypto sphere has been a sort of muted optimism people you know oh. say maybe it couldn't be worse than who was in there before that's for sure um you know how much better remains to be seen and the fact that uh, he will be the chairman of the uh the SEC, it, it doesn't make him a dictator. He still has the mandates of the SEC and, and an entire staff there that's going to make a lot of these determinations. But uh, you got to take them where you can. Yeah, that's for sure. Mm. Well, that today's news, was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah he's he's a known advocate uh, for cryptocurrency, uh, blockchain, I'm sorry, not cryptocurrency. Uh, and Team his, blockchain. He has actually taught courses on it at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in recent years. Oh, very good. It's got to be good. somewhat Rob, better than one of these dusty old fucks who, who can barely operate a phone. Yeah, true. Rob, I think maybe we should create our own crypto course as well. Because I've been getting approached by a lot of newbies who don't know where to start, where to begin, where to end. And I keep repeating myself individually. Let's just do a crypto course that's informational and educational and entertaining that will keep people's attention spans for longer than one minute, other, unlike other crypto courses. I think it'll be fun and exciting and, and even, dare I say, innovative to the space. Mm. That's nice. How do you buy Bitcoin? First, you must go fuck yourself uh -huh. and then you need to register a new account. Uh -huh. Then you Ooh, wait for that would then, get people's then, attention. Then you wait for it to hit six thousand, and you buy it all up. <laughs> you must now join this Filipino exchange. Wait for the price to drop to six thousand. Yeah. That's your bargain beginning yes. right there. Yes, there's your and lesson. If they send you legal notices. Ignore them all. <laughs> ignore them. <laughs> Put them in the special ignore. file reserved for legal notices, also known in some locales <laughs> as the trash can. Um, and uh, enjoy the rest of your life buying uh, 100 peso cigarettes in the Philippines. Uh, we got one more, <laughs> one more item of news, almost a joke, but New York Attorney General Letitia James has issued an investor alert against the wild price swings and extreme risk of crypto trading. Um, well, something in here that you'll like though, Darko, uh, the, uh, the notice also cites a, a recent Department of Justice alert uh, that characterized crypto trading platforms as being highly susceptible to abuse and offering protections for customers that are often illusory. Now, I think that that's something that you've been making the case for, that uh, these centralized exchanges are not your friend and that um, they have uh, some uh, not so nice practices that they all engage in. So the attorney general of, of the state of New York agrees with you on that. Yes, and I agree with them, too. Hmm. We all agree with each other. We agree to disagree to agree. Now, the part that I don't like, it is a warning, and they're not saying, oh, you know, it needs to not exist because of this, but plenty of people do. 
uh, is this warning against volatility. Um, now, volatility has taken on such a negative connotation, and I think it's frightened people that, that, that are driving this. Uh, but volatility is really the great equalizer, Darko. Volatility, listen, if you don't like, uh, for example, a lot of things you, you hear um, of a socialist nature or a progressive these days, I think the prefer, preferred word for some of these economic policies or whatever, uh, and, and you don't like the influence, the outsized influence that billionaires are exerting over our society, the number one practical tool that we have against the outsized influence of billionaires is the creation of more millionaires all right uh, and and, and yeah. these smaller fish will keep those bigger fish in check you can sit there waiting for good government it's never showed up and i don't think it will um but if we create more millionaires and we equalize the playing field out a little further these people won't have so much pull um so I, I'm in favor of things like volatility, because when we artificially keep volatility down, nobody's making money. They're making a little bit of shit interest. This is the way they like it, because they just get to sit with what they have. But it doesn't serve the little guy at all. Yeah, I was going to say, volatility certainly makes the markets more interesting, whether it's negative or positive. So if we're going to experience, and we have experienced times where it's been like three months of sideways action, three, six months even of sideways action, Bitcoin, um, most, my point's revolving around Bitcoin now. So like three, six months of just sideways action, boring, boring, boring. Oh, it's boring. No one's paying much attention. There's no exciting news. But then with volatility comes news as well. So whether the price pumps up or just dumps down, you're going to get the news that comes with it. And it keeps people's attentions invested into yep. what's going on as opposed to no volatility and sideways action. So, yeah, volatility, I think, is good, regardless if it's positive or negative volatility, mm -hmm. as opposed to sideways nothingness. Listen, all volatility creates winners and losers. They're just different sets of people. Yeah. Um, and, and these warnings are targeted towards the losers. Nobody needs to warn somebody that they're about volatility that's going to drive the price of their asset from five cents to a dollar. That's all good volatility, and, and you don't need a warning for that. You're happy. Um, it's the other side. And, and, and they, you know, I, I didn't I get as, as agitated as maybe somebody might think that I would watching our show uh, when I read this. It's fair to warn against that. We do it pretty much every week. We tell people, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. If you can't see it disappear tomorrow, don't put it into cryptocurrency. Don't. Uh, you shouldn't put it into any investment. You also shouldn't walk down to the casino and gamble with it. But that doesn't mean that cryptocurrency investing is gambling. It isn't. Um, it's not like walking up to a slot machine. It's far more, if you want to equate it to gambling, like poker, where there are elements of luck and chance, but there are also elements of psychology, elements of strategy that allow you to partially control yeah. your, your fate. You just raised a good point right there so why people while people are complaining about volatility in crypto and giving warnings and shit so people stay away from it for this reason what about the volatility on slot machines dude so i can invest one thousand dollars today on a cryptocurrency let's say bitcoin again we'll keep going back to bitcoin because it's the established mother of all coins that everyone knows about everyone knows bitcoin not everybody knows of or has ever heard of ethereum or cardano or I don't know old coins. Everyone knows Bitcoin though, right? So let's say I put $1,000 on Bitcoin today. I can tell you now, as volatile as it can be, that $1,000, it could take months for it to ever reach close to zero. If it was to go down to close to zero. If. Oh, that $1,000 in a slot machine, in five, 10 minutes, gone forever. Mm -hmm. Done. That's yep. it. So if you, if you, to the people watching, if you go slot machines or poker machines, whatever you want to call it, and gamble on these machines, instead of putting that money in a machine, gamble it, not financial advice, but on crypto, <laughs> Bitcoin even, and watch it last longer, watch it last longer than five, 10 minutes. Yeah, but do you get a yeah. dingy little bell and, and some fruit pictures? I guess now you do with any NFTs. <sighs> Fuck that shit. People man. like <laughs> lights and bells, Darko. They like them. It's exciting. It's to their own, man. It's different exciting. for different folks. Yeah, well, maybe maybe uh, somebody needs to look yeah, into well, that. Well, you know what? That, that preference is going to cost them. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, Those types of preferences and likes is going yeah. to cost them money. You won't get an argument from me. And notice that gambling doesn't bother a lot of the authorities that are bothered by cryptocurrency. Uh, and, and so ask yourself why that is. Uh, there, there, are, there are caps there, and, and if nothing else, there's the odds. Um, they know it's a losing proposition for the majority, and as long as they're, that's the case, they're fine with that. <clears throat> the occasional big winner, they know that'll be gone the next day, and, and in most cases it is. People get their fucking their nut, and they just squander it. So it's not a threat to them. Cryptocurrency yeah. is a threat to them because that doesn't happen. And just like, like you said, that money will last when it's put into the system. And it may go up and it may go down. It'll fluctuate and go side to side. But, but at the end off. of the day, going down to zero is a big fucking deal. And I think if anything, if things are going down to zero, you're, there's going to be other things in the world that you're paying attention to a little bit more than your cryptocurrency at that point, because things will be pretty bad. So, yes, much safer. And yes much more likely to have a good outcome. And I would submit that that's yep. why the elite don't like it. That's what they don't like. True story. I've got a, a very good friend who loves his slot machines. Yeah, loved them for years. And sometimes I'll see him and he's like, oh, I lost 400 today. Oh, I lost 900 today. Oh, I lost 700 today. And I've told him, I go, dude, if you want to gamble that kind of money, instead of putting in a machine, put it on Bitcoin or something similar and watch it for the next several months play itself instead of five ten minutes seven hundred dollars lost on a machine i've been trying to convince him dude but people they they don't know how to do it so they procrastinate in learning to get set up to create an account with an on-ramp exchange yeah all right but i guarantee you bro once they do that type of investment as opposed to a, a machine they'll be a lot more happier and well, I'm excited listen, too because... there's all different times of people and not everybody does that for strictly the money it may be the the, the uh, original motivator but i mean one of the things that is striking if you go to some place like vegas or atlantic city and you walk into any of these casinos and you go to the uh the slot machines you'll be treated especially vegas you you're treated to the scene i mean there's this line of 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 just gray old people with bags under their eyes and there's actually a funny story that um, my brother uh, went to a casino in atlantic city and he went into this room where they had these these uh slots or whatever and it was filled with these people mm. that looks like they had spent the last 20 years of their life doing this i mean this is basically their job they show up every day and, and i mean the bags are under the eyes and they you know they look like they haven't seen daylight in fucking 20 years and they probably have not seen much daylight because they're in there mm. doing this all day my brother actually walked in and he put a coin in the thing and he fucking hit dude he hit and the, the other people that were there said that all of these lifers are, are looking at him with just like rage <clears throat> on their <throat> face. They were so angry that he walked in and just hit the fucking slot on the first shot after these people sat there for, yeah. you know, had been sitting there all day and not hitting shit. Uh, but that's that story tells you yeah. exactly what that's all about. It's not how long you're there or how much money you put in or whatever. It's just is the number up? Well, there you go. Now you're going to hit. Right time, right place. That equates well, to a I lot of a people losing a lot of money. Like that. What's that? Mm. I've got, got a friend who used to work in those types of venues, and he asked me a question one day. He says, have you ever noticed when you walk into these types of venues, they smell like urine? They smell like piss in these venues? I'm like, come to think of it, now that you mentioned it, they do. Yeah. And he says, this is, A, the reason why they always have carpet. <laughs> All right? Yeah. And B, the reason for it. Yeah. And B, the reason for it. And, and he was he was specific about this. He said specifically, this is from his own work experience in years in the industry. He said the Chinese gamblers are the hardest gamblers with these machines. And they play so hard that they connect like a tube to their penis inside their pants and it goes down through their ankle. So if they need to piss, they just piss through this tube so that they don't leave the machine and it goes on the carpet. And it's very common, he said. That's why when you walk into these venues, you can, if you smell piss, it's because of that. You know, I, I have to say that is a, a highly uncivilized thing to do. Um, and if you're going to all the trouble to rig up this tube, why the fuck can't you also rig up a bottle to fucking catch the shit at the bottom? You're just going <laughs> to let that shit run out onto somebody's carpet? Oh, I mean, what kind of an animal would do that? 
because we're they're for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, but they won't be enough because they're for that long. Gambling so much money, they won't, won't get up from that machine until the money's gone, dude. Hmm. Uh, so you know, show up with a, br bring a, a fucking six pack of empties and just swap them out as you're fucking sitting there. I mean, you figure but something that time, out. That time spent swapping them could have been on the machine playing. See what I mean? Uh, well, I guess That's they call the it the hospital. Yeah. This is why I'm not in the hospitality industry. Because if I saw that, and I saw some motherfucker dumping his piss out onto the goddamn ground, that hose would go into his fucking mouth. Okay, and it wouldn't come out for the rest of the day, and he could do his business in there because that's bullshit. That's some fucking bullshit. Unbelievable. You know what? But that's it. We're, yeah, we're, we're out of fact. time. We you, 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 we can't talk about anything else. <laughs> People pissing on themselves while gambling. What a topic. Uh, not themselves. They're pissing on the floor. The floor that yeah, everybody has to true. use. Yep. Well, the let me floor try. that you step on, it's wet and smelly. Then you walk back home, walk into your house, and you've brought the piss under, underneath your shoes with you into your own house, and you don't even know it. You know, there, there are very few things that really go into being a civilized person. One of them is bathing. Uh, you know, the other is uh, waste management. And, and if you're fucking falling down in these areas, uh, that may be a good time to say, you know, my ability to uh, uh, formulate life choices is poor and perhaps i'm going to reach out to others for some feedback and find out if there are better ways that i could be doing things we'll, we'll leave the people with this however um and let them think about this uh for the uh, upcoming week until we have another show uh, babies are born with about 300 bones but by adulthood we only have 206 bones in our bodies so Darko, oh, wow. where do the rest of the bones go is what i want to know they eat them they eat them. Seems like, uh, yeah, you just digest. Fried chicken. Digest the bones. You're digesting. You're, not they, you. Oh, no, you I'm pretty sure you, they meant me. to get that. They, yeah, I'm pretty sure they'll meant to get that to create bigger bones. Or we yeah, we dissolve them and digest them as we're growing. Nah, I don't think so. Uh, I reckon they come together and just create bigger bones. That's what I think. Well, no, I'm think. not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. Oh, audience, I'm here's another opportunity for you. Put, put in the comments what you think. Do you agree with, with me? Do, do we digest ourselves as we're growing? Or do you agree with Darko and that the bones simply fuse into larger mega bones? And, and so there's few of them. Uh, type it in the comments. And that would uh, be... Uh, yeah, what? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That would be interesting to, to research for next week. We'll find out the, the answer. I, well, have at it. Um, and personally, I don't give a shit either way. Uh, but until next time, uh, uh, I don't know. What, what should the people do, Darko? You want to... <laughs> Jerk should, off violently. Sub until subscribe. Next time. Should, they, should they like? Subscribe. Jerk off. Like. Jerk off. Share. Jerk off. Hit the notification bell. Jerk off. Leave a comment down in this video. And don't forget to jerk off. That's well, what everybody should be doing. Looks like it's going to be a busy week mm -hmm. for you, folk. Uh, until next time, I, fact, I'm... <laughs> I was going to say, what do you, to, to the people watching, what do you try jerking off while hitting the like button at the same time? See how many attempts it will take for you to actually be on target and hit that like button while jerking off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a busy week, I guess. <laughs> uh, so until next time, when we bring you more such uh, delightful tidbits as that, uh, I am uh, Rob, uh, new and improved, friendly. This make you feel nice. You feel better. I don't. I'm not going to hit you, uh, Rob. And, and then uh, we have Darko as well. He's your other host. He he look. He doesn't need glasses because he naturally looks friendly. Um, and uh, we are the crypto degenerates. Yeah, that's going to be me in a month. We are the crypto degenerates. <laughs> be, be well. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs>